بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So brothers we'll just continue from where we left off uh, last week <coughs> which was about three quarters of the way through the third principle just double check before we start yeah so inshallah aim aim for today is to complete the third principle and then we'll stop there inshallah so there'll probably be a shorter lesson today than usual <clears throat> so then the sheikh uh, he says from where we left off he says for shahidu anna nabiya alayhi salatu was salam jama'a بين هذه الأصول الثلاثة في حديث في حديث واحد قاله في مشهد الخيف من منا وهذا الحديث ثلاث لا يغل عليهن قلب امرأ مسلم نظر الله امرأ سمع مقالتي حديث متواتر رواه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أكثر من عشرين صحابيا ولعل من أصحاب توات الحديث أنه ألقي في مجمع, مجمع عام وفي خطبة عامة يسمعها الجميع فهذا كله من نصح النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لأمته وبيانه لأمته صلوات الله وسلامه عليه so, the Shaykh says, so cutting on from where we left off, he says the point is that the Prophet ﷺ, he, he gathered, he brought these three principles together. So from this book, the six principles, the first principle, the second principle, and the third principle we're discussing uh, currently, he brought all these together. And that's the point that the Shaykh is bringing here and mentioning that the Prophet ﷺ, he brought these three points together, that you can't have any of these three points or foundations uh, or foundational principles one can't exist without the other they all have to be present yeah uh, and then he mentions the two hadith that we went through last week so if anybody's forgotten they can refer back to the previous lesson regarding those two hadith he briefly just mentions them here just to remind us uh, uh, Muslim, Allah, and the hadith Nadar Allah. And and as we remember that these uh, that these hadith they brought they, they brought evidence for these three uh, principles. And Sheikh mentions it and he says that the hadith is mutawatir. Why? Because the hadith uh, when the Prophet was mentioning uh, these narrations that we read, then it was in front of the Sahaba. It was uh, addressing the Sahaba generally, so they were there. And that's why it's Mutawata, because there's more than 20 people narrating the same hadith. Yeah. That's what the Sheikh mentions here. And then in the end, towards the end of this paragraph, he says that this is, in, in this hadith, we find information. Why is this advice? The Prophet is advising his ummah and clarifying to his ummah uh, what's upon them. Yeah, and what's upon them to do. So then in the next paragraph, the Shaykh, he goes on to say, he says, وَقَوْلُ الْمُصَنِّفِ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ هَذَا بَيِّنَا شَرْعًا وَقَدَرًا So here, going back to the original text of the book, the Shaykh, the original author, Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, he mentions here, in that all of this that we've been discussing in the third principle from last week and we're carrying on this week, then that all of this has been explained. 
shan wa qadran and if you remember last week i said that uh, uh, the shaykh will explain what shar'an wa qadran means what does it mean specifically so the shaykh he goes on to say he says shar'an so he explains what shar'an means he says shar'an ay bima jaa fi kitab Allah wa sunnati nabiyhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min adillatin ala dhalik min uh, min adillatin ala dhalik so w- what does shar'an mean then it means the shaykh says it means i e that which the uh, the book of allah came with that which came in the book of allah and that which came in the sunnah of our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from evidences upon what we've been discussing so that's sharan then he says and clarifying what qadran is he says ay bima yura wa yushahid wa yu'ayin min al waqai wal wal ahdath al al madniya al mu'lima bi sabab at tafarruq wa aydan ma yushahid wa yu'ayin min al ahdath al mufraha bi sabab al ijtima' wa kayfa annahu bil ijtima' tatahaqqaq al rahma lin nas wa bil furqati yabuuna bil adhab wa yusbihuna nahbatan lil ada aw nahbatan lil nahbatan lil ada so then the sheikh says what does qadaran mean and so he goes on to explain he says qadaran he says qadaran i e that is from that which we see and we uh, you know that we see and observe and those things that befall us and that happen you know to us that affect us right in our daily lives for example um and and then he goes on to explain and he says for example those bad things that might happen because of splitting and differing from the muslims splitting away from following the quran and sunnah being upon that uh, way of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then the direct result of that is pain is you know uh, trials and tribulations and things like this and we see those negative consequences and that's what it means by qadran likewise on the other side of it if you follow and you stick to what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says you stick to all the advice that we're going through here for example some of these advices here with regards to being one body one group one society one umma nation upon the quran and sunnah then we see the direct we see the fruits of it I think that would be the easiest way to say it. you see the fruits of that i.e. all the good things come from it the happiness you know the strength of the muslims and everything else that comes with it and you see that and the mercy from the people and on all of these things so as the sheikh mentioned last week when we were reading the book um going back to ishtima so not splitting and differing being one group one nation upon the quran and sunnah then that brings about all kinds of benefits including what mercy to the people and likewise doing the opposite splitting differing and going away from the quran and the sunnah as uh, uh, and splitting and differing uh, and things like this then this will result in pain and punishment uh, uh, and a whole host of other negative things as as i mentioned last time last week so then the sheikh, sheikh says wa idha tanaza ahlu al-iman wa tafarraqu thahabat haybatuhum وضعف, so then if if the people of iman right the muslims the people of iman the mu'minin then if they you know if they split and they start argument argumentation splitting and differing and all this then what happens in reality the sheikh mentions some examples he says here that they will split and you know that which they have been given uh, from power and strength and things like that they'll be weakened their word will will their word and their actions everything will be weakened and they will basically be overpowered by the enemies that's what will happen so then the sheikh goes and says says fa hada fa hada amrun mubayyin fa hada amrun mubayyin qadaran man yanzuru fi hal an-nasi wa fi waqi'ihim abr at-tarikh يرى يرى واضحا اثر الاجتماع ويرى ايضا واضحا اثر الفرقه so then the sheikh goes on to say in the final sentence of page 19 in our pdf that we're reading from he says that 
So he says that this fair is clear. It's clear, it's been clarified. And whoever looks into the uh, the conditions of the people and what has befallen them over centuries, if we look, if we turn to history, if you look at what happened in history, then uh, we see clearly uh, the effects of being one group, being strong Muslim society and nation, an ummah, yeah, together. Um, and um, and on the other hand, you see the opposite as well when, when splitting and differing happens, what the effects are. You know, and we all can relate to that and look back in uh, Islamic history and see what happened. And we can see the direct effects for us and there's a lesson for us, inshallah, as well. So then the Shaykh Wazim says, ثُمَّ يَقُولُ الْمُصَنِّفُ بَعْدَ بَيَانِهِ لِهَذَا الْأَمْرِ ثُمَّ صَارَ هَذَا الْأَسْلُ لَا يُعْرَفُ عِنْدَ أَكْثَرْ مِنْ يَدْعِيَ الْإِلْمِ فَكَيْفَ الْعَمَلْ بِهِ So then we move on to the next part of what Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab mentioned in his book, the next sentence following on. Uh, from that, you can see that in bold. So the Shaykh says, so the next part that the, uh, the author mentioned, he says that, he says here, yeah, then then the affair became as such that this principle that we're discussing, the third principle, it, it, after be, becoming, after being well known, it became unknown. It wasn't as well known anymore with the people who are claiming knowledge. And the people who claim knowledge w- weren't aware of this major and important principle, the third principle we're talking about. Uh, in the last in last week's lesson and today's, and so the sheikh says. So then, if there isn't any awareness of that knowledge and they don't have that knowledge, then how can they act upon it? Which is true. If you don't have something, you can't act upon it. If you don't know something, you can't. You, know, you can't use it. It's impossible for you to do anything because you just you just don't know. So then the sheikh goes on to say, "هذا الأصل الذي هو هو السمع والطاعة لا يعرف عند أكثر أهل العلم يعني دعك عن الأوام." لا يعرف عند أكثر أهل العلم فكيف العمل به فكيف أن أن يعمل به يعني يحقق السمع والطاعة التي أمر بها إذا إذا دخلت الأهواء القلوب عميت عن السنة وأصبح يشتغل وأصبح يشتغل من هو مؤتن بالعلم بالوقية في الولاة وإغارة الصدور على الولاة وملء القلوب بالغش غش للولاة والحقد وغير ذلك من المعاني التي ليس في القرآن ولا في الحديث حرف ولا في الحديث حرف واحد يدعو إليها لا يوجد في الحديث حرف واحد يدعو إلى هذه الأمور لكن ترى في الحديث وبكثرة أمر بسمع وطاعة بسمع وطاعتي أمر بالاجتماع أمر بالدعاء للولاة أمر بالنصيحة للولاة أحاديث كثيرة في هذا المعنى ولا يوجد حديث واحد في الأمر بسبهم أو الأمر بغشهم أو الأمر بإغارة الصدور عليهم أو ملء النفوس غشا لهم لا يوجد حديث واحد So then the Sheikh is saying in this, um, uh, in this paragraph here he says here that the, that the uh, أصل or the foundation here is for is what is it is what we've been discussing, and that is listening or hearing and obeying the ruler, the Muslim ruler. And the Sheikh says here that it's become uh, unknown. This this great foundation is not known by many of the people of Ilm, so let alone uh, the general masses of the Muslims. Says that many of the people of knowledge do not know. So how can they act upon it if they don't know it? He says, how can they act upon it then and, uh, you know, practice it if they don't know it? And how can they actualize hearing and obeying the Muslim rulers when uh, they've been commanded to do that? But because they don't have the knowledge of it, then they are unaware and, and they can't act upon something they don't know. So then the Sheikh goes on to say, he says, so if desires have entered your heart, then your, your heart becomes blind to the sunnah, you know, I don't follow the sunnah if you start following your desires and you don't follow the sunnah like that. He also says, then he start becoming he starts becoming busy um with uh, 
with affairs such as you know you know the muslim leaders and uh, getting angry you know about things going on you know in the world and things going on, how people we probably always come across people uh, from time to time um talking about these things and then you know other things like trying to cheat the muslim leaders hating the muslim leaders and things like this and all these kinds of meanings which we do not find as we uh, remember from last week we don't find any proof to do this from the quran nor the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we don't find one word we do not find one word telling you to do this that calls to this so the shaykh also says that there isn't anything present from the ahadith even also from the ahadith there's nothing present from there telling you to do any of these things like you know, insulting the Muslim leaders, trying to cheat them, talking bad about them, uh, you know, trying to incite hatred upon them and uh, going even worse than that, trying to, uh, you know, take your sword and, you know, go to war with them and things like this and destabilize uh, Muslim countries and things like this. This is not from the Quran and the Sunnah. The Sheikh says, but you see in the Ahadith, you see, and as mentioned last week, we see in the Ahadith, so many evidences, so many, it's unbelievable. Uh, as the Sheikh mentioned last week, Kitabul Imara, yeah, the book of Al Imara, Kitabul Imara, if you go to there in Sahih Muslim, there are an uh, unlimited number of a hadith calling to what? Hearing and obeying the Muslim leaders and being one group from the Quran and Sunnah following the deen, being one group, being a body. That's what we've been called to do and that's what we've been commanded to do. Yeah, and that for the Muslim leaders that we advise them and that we do dua for them and things like this, that which has come in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu within these meanings. Yeah, and we won't, and the Sheikh says, you won't find a hadith, you won't find one hadith, right, that 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 commands you to insult them and swear at them and say bad things to them, or you won't find anything that that commands you to cheat them. And you won't find anything to uh, 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 you won't find anything either with regards to uh riling the people up getting them you know worked up with the emotion and uh using that emotion in the general people to get them and make them angry with the muslim leaders you won't find anything calling that from the quran or the sunnah so the sheikh mentions this here and he mentioned this last week if you remember whoever was here uh, last week in the lesson you'll remember whoever's listened to the last lesson You'll see <coughs> that I mentioned that. So the Sheikh goes on to say, فَمَنْ عَمِلَ بِهَذِ الْأُمُورِ أَعْنِيَ الْغِشَّ وَالْغِلْ وَالسَّبْ هَلْ رَائِدُهُ فِي هَذِ الْأَمَالِ سُنَّةِ إِنْ قَالَ نَعَمْ يَأْتِي بِحَرْفٍ وَاحِدٍ فِي سُنَّةِ يَدُلُ عَلَى هَذِ الْأُمُورِ وَإِنْ كَانَ رَائِدُ الْهَوَى وَهُوَ فِئْلًا رَائِدُهُ فَهَذَا يُهْلِكُ نَفْسَهُ وَيُهْلِكُ غَيْرَهُ So then the Sheikh says that, so if this if a person is doing these sort of actions like um, cheating the Muslim leaders and the rulers and those people in authority and having hatred in the heart for them and you know insulting them and swearing at them and all the rest of it that was mentioned earlier, then can we say he's asked this question, he goes, Can we say that their intentions are the sunnah, that they're falling and acting out of the sunnah? And the Sheikh says clearly that is not from the Sunnah as we've established with the evidences, that, that is not from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it's not from the Muslims to do that and rather what is this person's intention or his what, what does he desire he's following his desires and what he desires from that is to rile up the people for example and and clearly if somebody is doing these sort of actions against the Muslim rulers and leaders without any evidence which they don't have obviously they don't have any evidence to do that then they're not following the Sunnah they're not the people of the Sunnah even if they say so, um, so then we go on to uh, the Sheikh says, For Sunnah to lay Safiha illa dua illa dawati lilish timai wal munasaha hatta lo hasala hatta lo hasala min wali il amri fasad wa jor wa dulm fa fi had al makam akad in the bissal Allah wali wa salam aidan ala sami wa ta kal. So then the Sheikh goes on to say here. The the sunnah that not that the sunnah doesn't call to uh, this you know uh, 
uh, insulting and you know talking bad and hating and having hatred and riling up the people against the Muslim leaders. The Sunnah does not call to it. Rather, it calls to um, it calls to uh, being one group, one unit. Yeah, society, the Muslim leader and his citizens, and and also calls to advising the rulers, advising them. And then the Sheikh goes on to say. Even to the point, if we if we were, let's say, we're in a Muslim country, we're under the Muslim ruler, um, uh, even if we, for example, uh, obtained, uh, for example, we, we were faced with uh, some kind of corruption or oppression or something like that, then the, 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 the Sheikh says that the Prophet ﷺ has clarified this as well also with regards to hating and obeying the ruler, even in those matters, even in those situations. And then, as you can see in the highlighted text here, what he says said, "Isma wa atir wa in akhada malaka wa zaraba zahrak," and that's taken from the hadith, meaning that listen and obey, hear and obey, listen and obey. That even if he takes, he takes your wealth and beats your back. That's a say hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam cl clarifying to us uh, that affair. And so the Sheikh says, وَهَذَا فِيهِ لَفَتْ انْتِبَاحْ إِلَىٰ عُمُومِ النَّاسِ أَنَّ الْذِيَاءَ هَذَا الْإِنسَانِ وَنَصِيبَهُ الدُّنْيَوِي لَيْسَ مُخَوَّلًا لِنَزْعِ الْيَدْ مِنَ الطَّعَى وَكَمْ مِنْ أُنَاسٍ نَزَعُوا أَوْ كَانَ سَبَبْ نَزْعِ الْيَدْ مِنْ طَاعَةٍ هُوَ فَوَاتْ هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَوِي لَمْ يُحَصِّلْ كَذَا وَلَمْ يَحْصُلْ كَذَا فَيَبْدَأُ يَسُبُّ الْوُلَاتِ وَيَتْعَنُ فِيهِمْ وَيُغِرِ الصُّدُورَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَإِذَا تَشَتَّتْ عَنْ سَبَبْ حَجْمَتِهِ هَذِهِ لَا تَجِدُهَا نُصْرَةً لِلدِّينَ وَإِنَّمَا نَظْرًا لِحَذِ النَّفْسِ وَلِهَذَا لَفْتَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ الانتباه لهذا الأمر قال اسمع وعطي وإن أخذ مالك وضرب ظهرك قال اسمع وعطي وجاء أيضا أصبر حتى يستريح بر أو يستراح من فاجر أكد على هذا المعنى وكثير من الناس عندما يدخل في هذه القضية يدخل لحظوظه الدنيوية إما كان يريد الرئاسة فما حصلت له أو زعامة لم تتحقق له أو مالن أو ما إلى غير ذلك. So then the Sheikh is saying he continues and he says, so if you say if you look at this, we look at and we pay attention to what uh, the Sheikh is mentioning here, and he says uh, he says that if you try to take power away like this from the Muslim rulers or cause trouble in this instance, in kind of these sort of situations, you, what do you end up with? Generally speaking, you end up with, as we've seen it with our own eyes in our own lifetime, you end up with loss. You lose what you have. You know, it's a loss to everybody. The general masses are in a loss when these sort of things happen. You know, whether what he owns from the, from the mass of the dunya, you know, his, his possessions, whatever it might be, it's a loss. You end up with a loss. And when people try to take the power away, from the Muslim leader without right, then we see what's happened. What's happened to the people? I mean, we've got plenty of examples in our own lifetime when people have gone against the Muslim leaders. What's happened? They destroyed the whole country's been destroyed. They've got nothing left, and it just continues and continues. And it's like a it's a never ending situation. So you know, uh, so we can see all the negative impacts from this, and that's what the Sheikh is mentioning here, and also. That when you see people, the Sheikh mentions that when you see people doing this, like where they're attacking the leaders and trying to uh, get people to, you know, make people angry and, you know, uh, you know, make them feel and play with their emotions and try to gather this, try to get some momentum against Muslim leaders, uh, then they're after a number of things from the dunya. They want either they want uh, control or power uh, or, or they want to be in a position of power, you know, and, and, the, and these sort of things. And the Sheikh says that nothing ever good comes from these these kinds of actions. Uh, and at the end of the day, as we've established, they're against the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They're against the Deen. They're not principles of the Deen to do these sort of things. So they might want uh, leadership. They might want power 
or they might want uh, wealth and other than that. And then the Sheikh uh, cites a uh, Quran ayah <coughs> where it says, "Fa in u'tu minha radu wa in lam yu'tu minha idahum yaschutun." Oh, yes, Khatun. So if you have a look at that, um, let's go to the translation, inshallah. Surah at Tawbah, verse 58. We'll read the whole ayah. And of them are some who accuse you, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the matter of the distribution of the arms. If they are given part thereof, they are pleased. But if they are not given thereof, behold, they are enraged. So then the Sheikh says, Lakin and Nasih, uh, and Nasih, الذي ليس في قلبي غل هم دين الله عز وجل حتى لو فات بعد هذه اجتماع الناس وصلاه أمرهم أهم عنده وأولى عنده بالعناية. So then on the contrast to that, then however, the Sheikh says, however, the one who's a sincere advisor, the one who's advi- advised sincere advisor, then you know he doesn't hold within his heart, he doesn't harbor within his heart any kind of hate or malice, and and his interest is the deen of Allah. That's the reason why he's doing it. It's the deen of Allah Zawajal. Up until if if he loses some of his own possessions or wealth or whatever it is, the important thing to him is keeping the Muslims as one united body, a safe society, you know, one group and things moving along, you know. Uh, and, it, and he and also wants uh, the rectification and uprightness of them. And that's what's important to him, and uh, that's his priority. Yeah, so that's the right person who's looking at these things in the correct way, yeah, as the Prophet advised as well, yeah, and commanded. So then uh, the Shaykh goes on to say, Yadkur Shawkani Rahmahullah fi risalatin lahu fi hadal bab, fi hadal bab, kisatun tasawur hal al awam fi hadal bab yakul. So then uh, the Shaykh is going to just mention. Um, uh, uh, a story from one of the previous scholars, Imam Shawkani, uh, that's related to what we're discussing today. So we'll read in Arabic and then we translate. He says, "Yaqul kunna fi majl kunna fi majlisin, fatakallama ahaduhum fi ahad al wuzara akhda yatanu fihi. Fakultu lahu tatan tatanu fihi li dinihi aw li dunya. Qala." بل للدين يقول ثم سكتنا قليلا فبدا الرجل يتكلم عن ذاك الوزير قال الفاعل ابن الفاعل يركب الفار من الدواء ويلبس الفاخر من الثياب ويسكن الكذا من القصور اصبح الحديث عن ماذا عن الدنيا وبما لو اعطي هذا مثله قصور وانتهت المشكله فأصبحت فأصبح تعنه فيه في أمر الدنيا وليس نصحا للدين ولو كان نصحا للدين ليس هذا سبيله سبيل سبيله النصيحة المبينة في المبينة في سنة النبي الكريم عليه الصلاة والسلام. So then the Sheikh he says here that the Imam Shokani mentions a, a story with regards to what he experienced. Uh, and he says here that the, he was sitting, he was sitting in a, in a sitting with a group of people. Uh, so there was uh, was one of uh, was one of the people there started speaking about one of the, uh, you know, the ministers, uh, the ministers. And he started uh, attacking this minister verbally, you know, X, Y, and Z, saying things about him, you know, bad things. So so the Imam said to him. You are in. You are attacking. Are you attacking him or talking? Um, mentioning these points f- because of you know for the p- purpose of the deen or is it for the for the dunya? And he said rather for the deen. I'm doing it for the deen. I'm mentioning this for his deen, and to, uh, you know mention for the deen. So he said. The, he, so Imam the Imam Shokani says. Then we 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 went quiet for a bit. You know for a period of time we were quiet. Nobody said anything. Then this man, he started. He started again. He started speaking, uh, you know, um, about uh, such and such a uh, was minister. Uh, you know, uh, such and such a uh, was minister. You know, he he rides. Uh, you know, he has a fancy ride, for example, an expensive ride that, like, whether it's a horse or whatever it is, he has an expensive ride. You know, uh, he uh, 
he wears uh, you know v- you know very expensive for example clothes uh, and he lives in you know like lives in a castle for example or a big 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 house or a mansion what we say today for example so then the sheikh says what did the speech turn to the person said in the beginning that it's about the deen and eventually what happened it actually was to do with the dunya because he started mentioning things about dunya big house a good ride nice clothes and you know things like that and so the sheikh said that the speech eventually what was it really about it was about the dunya uh, and the sheikh says maybe as well that if this person was attacking the 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 uh, the wazir the uh, the minister if he was attacking that minister uh, and if that person who was attacking the minister was given something of what he has maybe the problem would just it, it would end the problem would end why because this person really is seeking a piece of the dunya you don't do anything for the deen so then the sheikh says so his his attack his verbal attack uh, became an affair of the dunya rather than advising for the sake of the deen and even if it was let's say the sheikh says even if it was advice with the, in ter- for the sake of the deen for example then he says that this is not the path that you take this is not the type of a, this is not the approach you take this is not the approach he says that the approach that you take uh, has been clarified that the approach of advising the rulers for example or the ones who are moving authority there's an uh, um uh, there's an a, a, a clarified approach which we learned from the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as mentioned previously that's the right way of going about this and the right approach not what the man was doing verbally attacking uh, uh, the leaders or those in position of authority so then the sheikh goes on to say okay so we got this two paragraphs left he will say hada mithlu qusur um, where are we uh, uh, yeah so then the sheikh says here fa hadhi al umur ma tasluhu illa bi sunnah wa sunnah la budda fiha min qira'ati ahadith an-nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam yatajarrad min al ahwa wa kathir min an nas bi sabab ghalabat al ahwa alayhim yastawhish min qira'ati al ahadith allati fiha al amr bi sam'i wa ta'a yaqra'u bil istihash al ahadith allati fi salah wa yaqra'u bil istihash al ahadith allati fi zakah wa idha ja'a ila mithl kitab al imara من صحيح مسلم استوحش من الحديث لماذا الذي امر بالصلاه والصيام هو الذي امر بالسمع والطاعه ومصلحه المسلمين مسلمين في هذا كله so then the sheikh says so in these affairs these in these affairs like these sort of situations that we've mentioned with regards to this third principle then they they don't get they won't re- rectify and be restored to uprightness except by way of the sunnah what the sunnah came with and he says it's it's incumbent that we follow the sunnah and uh, and that we read the ahadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh without any desire that we we read it with a clear conscience and and heart and that we don't bring any of our desires into it when we're reading them he says many of the people because of uh the uh, the desires overcoming them uh you know they'll uh, they'll read the ahadith in, in in this affair they won't read the ahadith with regards to in kitabul imara in that section of sahih muslim for example they won't go near it because of their desires with regards to the topic of hearing and obeying the muslim rulers and those in authority but they will they will uh, they won't have any problem reading the all the ahadith about the prayer they won't have any problem reading any uh, any of the ahadith with regards to zakah for example obligatory charity and other topics however when they come across uh, the book of imara in sahih muslim they will estrange they will estrange themselves away from and go far away from these ahadith why the sheikh says because uh, he says it was why did they do that you know why you do you're reading all the other hadith but then you come across this section with regards to hearing and obeying the rulers and and you're running away from it you're turning a blind eye you don't want to read them why because of their desires it's because of their desires and then the shaykh goes on to say he says who the one who commanded right with salah with prayer and with fasting he is the one who commanded with hearing and obeying the rulers 
It's the same person commanded. The Prophet ﷺ commanded us with, uh, with prayer and with uh, uh, fasting and all the other types of things in our deen. He's also, he's also the one who commanded us with hearing and obeying the Muslim rule and being patient. Yeah? And looking at the benefit uh, or for the Muslim, uh, for the Muslim as, uh, for the Muslims as a whole. So uh, that answers that and the Shaykh clarifies it. Uh, 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 Hafizullah uh, in that regard. So then we're on the last paragraph and then we will finish here inshallah today and then we'll continue with the fourth principle next week. So we were the last paragraph. The Shaykh says, فَهَذَا بَابٌ عَذِيمٌ وَأَصْلٌ مُهِمٌ إِنْدَمَا يَغْلِبُ عَلَى النَّاسِ لَهْوَا يُرَيْعُونَهُ وَيَكُونُ تَذِيعُهُمْ لَهُ لَيْسَ مَبْنِيًا عَلَى قَوَائِدْ شَرْعِيَّةٌ وَإِنَّمَا مَبْنِيٌ على أهواي تتجارى بالناس وتذهب بهم المذاهب وفي هذا الباب تجد من من يسلك هذا المسلك مسلك الفرقة والوقية في الولاة يوسف بين عوام المسلمين بماذا يوسف بالذي لا تأخذه في الله لومة لائم يقول كلمة أو يقول كلمة الحق ولا يبالي وألقاب تطلق في غير محلها حتى ينفخ في الناس وحقيقة أمره أنه يشق سف المسلمين و... ويفرق كلمتهم ولا يتحقق فيهم على يديه خيرا الخير بالاجتماع الرحمة بالاجتماع بإصلاح الأمور بالنصيحة بالدعاء بالتعاون باللين ليس بإيغار السدور وتفرق الكلمة وتشتيت الشمل هذه الأمور لا يتحقق بها خير فشاهدوا أن هذه الأصول الثلاثة الإخلاص والاجتماع وسمع وطاع أصول كثر بيانها كثر بيانها في النصوص والأدلة ولكن قل من يأمل, قل من يأمل بها بسبب الأهواء التي تتجارى بالناس so finally, in this last section, the Sheikh he says that so in this chapter or in this topic subject, a great subject is uh, is is an important foundation and principle. And as he says, he says when uh, when the people are overtaken by their desires, they lose, you know, they they lose they they lose this foundation, this principle. Or, or they just are in loss generally, and be, and and their loss it isn't based upon, and 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 was because they you know when they start attacking the leaders for example, um, and going against the uh, against the sunnah and the deen in terms of you know hating or being the rulers then their loss why is it, it, it is not that all of their loss and all this is is it's a result it's a result of uh, of um, of not. Following the Sharia, not following the principles of the Sharia, Islamic law, and rather it's uh, and so therefore it's based their their loss is based upon why? What's the reason for their loss? The loss is because of their desires, and 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 what these types of people spread amongst the people as well, of desires, you know, attacking the scholar, uh, uh, people of authority, uh, whether they be scholars, whether they be Muslim leaders. Uh, uh, and they follow this way, uh, and this is the path, and their path is of splitting and differing and attacking uh, the leaders, the Muslim leaders, and other people in authority, and splitting, uh, trying to split people, and cause differing, and all sorts of evil things uh, for the general masses, the Muslims. Uh, and the Sheikh says, they be described, uh, you know, and, and, the, and he goes on to say here that, in the last few lines of this paragraph, that we, we, we shouldn't fear and none of us should fear the blame of the blamers we know the quran and the sunnah we've learned this principle and we should clarify it to the people where we can you clarify it to the people and you speak the truth we don't fear the blame of the blamers they'll always be there uh to blame or to cause problems but you speak the truth and you know you you you, you that's the more more important thing of clarifying the truth and spreading the correct principles from the deen and, and I shouldn't consider those people, uh, you know, all the negative thoughts that might come from other people or negative things from other people that you're doing for the sake of Allah. Yeah. 
And so when you look at these people, all you see from them is trying to rile the people up, trying to cause trouble, splitting the ranks of the Muslims, and all sorts of evil and negative things for the Muslim Ummah as a whole. And, you, and the Sheikh says that you don't see anything good from that. You don't see anything good from all of this. Rather, the, the good is with uh, keeping the Muslims as a whole, not causing splitting and differing and calling to them to the Quran and the Sunnah. And mercy is in this, and we find mercy within that. And we also find um, rectification of the affairs through that and, through, uh, and by advising. Uh, and through dua and through helping one another and through being soft to each other and helping each other and it's not by riling up the people and uh, stalking their emotions uh, uh, and all these kinds of things splitting the people and their word and the way they are and upon the deen that they are and causing the splits within society he says that these affairs uh, if if they if they occur then then they don't bring about any good and the Sheikh says the point here is that these three principles that we've discussed so far in this book, Al-Ikhlas, sincerity, yeah, and uh, Al-Ishtima, being gathered, being one group, one body, and listening, uh, hearing and obeying the ruler. He says that these principles, uh, you know, uh, there are plenty of hadith and evidence is generally evidence from the Quran and Sunnah that back these, these principles up. However, and even though the evidences are very many and there's plentiful uh, of evidence out there with regards to these principles, then uh, there's very few people that uh, follow these principles and uh, and and carry out these uh, uh, commands. Why? Because of their because of their uh, desires. Because of their desires, and so then they because of their desires, it blocks them from following the truth. So the sheikh uh, uh, ends there. So uh, we'll uh, stop there as well. And next week, inshallah, we'll start from the fourth principle. So inshallah, we'll, be, we'll probably do the lesson same time next week as well. Inshallah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ilan. Astaghfiruka wa tubi alaykum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.